much is your phone worth? Not your cell phone, your office phone. How about nearly $500? That's how much the city of El Paso spent on some of its phones. New at 6, ABC7's I-Team reporter Maria Garcia investigated the costs. In the story you'll see only on ABC7. Maria. Rick, Selena, well, you know, this is a bigger, part of a bigger plan for the city. They're revamping their entire IT system. Among the upgrades, video phones for the ninth and the 10th floor. So is it a wise investment or a waste of your taxpayer money? You decide. They can prove that there's a, a cost benefit, you know, greater benefit by saving elsewhere travel, then I think it would be a good, you know, good, good idea. A good idea or not, the phones are $469 each. They're part of the city's plan to revamp and improve their internal communication. And so far, they've bought 50 of them for employees on the 9th and 10th floors. Those are city attorneys, city reps, and their staff. The grand total to you, $23,450. Sounds like a government boondoggle to me. It's been a great investment for the city. City Information Technology Director Miguel Gamino says the phones, which operate by being connected to the Internet, will eventually save the city money. They can have a face-to-face -face conversation with the fire chief or the, the chief of police from across town without having to spend an hour round trip in traffic. Uh, is it something that's number one on my priority list? No, uh, it's not. That being said, although you'll have that upfront cost, uh, at the end, it'll be a cost, saving ma cost savings measure. You can Skype on computers, and that's free, by the way. You know, you don't have yeah. to have teleconferencing capability on a $469 phone. Teleconferencing is the way, you know, the future. Everybody's doing it. Yeah. And if it's going to help uh, the city save money in the long run, then I, I don't see a problem. Now, putting the phones in the ninth and 10th floors was a sort of pilot program to see if they'd work system-wide. So far, the IT director told me it's gone pretty well, so they're planning on getting the video phones for department heads spread out all over the city so they can start reducing travel, they say. One city representative said this was a vote that will be talked about for generations. The religious group who's behind that voter-approved ordinance to take away the health insurance came with passionate pleas, asking council to respect their vote. But they also came with threats of a recall for any city rep who voted for the benefits. And a council today with an emotional decision, rescind a voter-approved ordinance or let more than a hundred unintended people lose their health insurance. My rights and the rights of the people of El Paso have been violated. I commend you, Mayor. I commend you for standing up for the rights of those who have been, been marginalized and oppressed and discriminated. To opposing views, some condemning and threatening City Council with a recall. And we will make sure that every one of you who wish, wishes to take away our rights will be held accountable. Others praising their decision that is unpopular with some. The council's responsibility is to look within themselves, to use their own moral judgment, and to consider the humanity of every person that they make a decision about. And then there are the unintended people who will lose their health insurance because of the vaguely worded voter initiative. I urge you to continue to take care of us the way you used to, and no changes made of any kind. Some on the religious group say that that's an unfortunate consequence to democracy and want their ordinance respected at all cost. I would rather have a messy and imperfect democracy than no democracy at all. The main contention, whether council can take away the health insurance of only the domestic partners. The city says that federal judge Frank Montalvo's ruling prevents them from doing that, so they have to pick. Either everyone intentionally or unintentionally affected loses their health insurance or everyone keeps it. And some council members having to make decisions they are personally opposed to. As a Catholic, I believe that it is not our place to judge one another but rather to welcome and show compassion to everyone regardless of our differences. However, I also believe that once the people have spoken, we as a council and I individually do not and should not have the authority to trample on the people's wishes simply because we do not agree with them.
Now the mayor had to break the tie in favor of restoring the health insurance. Siding with the mayor were Susie Bird, Rachel Quintana, Beto O'Rourke and Steve Ortega. Voting against the benefits were Emma Acosta and Morgan Lilly, Eddie Olguin and Carl Robinson. Don't think this is over. Aside from that recall, Tom Brown said his group may sue the city for rescinding the ordinance. And that's not all. He believes that since some of the council members will receive the restored health insurance, that it's a conflict of interest and they're breaking the rules. And said he'd file a complaint with the FBI, the Texas Ethics Commission, and the district attorney. Of course, we'll continue to bring you complete coverage. City leaders say El Paso Electric makes too much profit. And now, after three weeks of negotiations and a testy back and forth the this rates morning, are high. council is moving Tell forward them. with a rate case, an unprecedented move that could cost both sides millions of dollars. ABC 7's Maria Garcia has been following the story closely. She's live to explain how we got here and what's next. Maria. Rick and Estella City Rep Courtney Nyland says El Paso Electric has not justified its rates. So now she and the rest of council will try to force it to low, lower its electric rates, some of the highest in the state, something the regulated monopoly says it'll fight and may even ask for higher rates. The rates are high. Tell us why. I answered them in her council office and she refused to listen. Nyland wasted no time. She even showed a map of different cities where El Paso Electric's shareholders live to show they even paid lower electric rates. Why did they think it's okay to charge us twice as much when they live in cities that are charging half? El Paso Electric CEO David Stevens says it's not that simple. He says that rates are higher because there's less consumption here, while the price to produce electricity remains high. To tell you spread that cost to a per kilowatt hour basis. If you have a lower denominator, you're going to have a higher cost. It's just that simple. So I totally disagree. You and I are going to disagree on this. He also said the electric company was willing to freeze rates and have a rate case at a later time. You've offered to freeze rates for a period of three years, which by all means, sir, is nothing. Your cost per kilowatt hour is higher but your total bill is lower. And our total bills are still lower on a residential basis than almost anywhere in the state of Texas. With all due respect, Mr. Stevens, do you think we're foolish that we don't understand the difference between price and consumption? Consumption has nothing to do with price, sir. It has totally everything to do How? with price. That's, How? that's why I'm saying that you That's like you saying not... uh, this, this gallon of gas is going to cost you $5 a gallon, but if you only drive a mile, it's not going to be that big of a deal. The electric company now has three weeks to propose lower rates to city council. Now, if council is not satisfied with their proposal, it can force a temporary 5% rate cut until the rate case next year. El Paso Electric estimates a rate case will cost it and the city combined about $7 million, costs that will be passed down to the rate and taxpayers. El Paso police are investigating a homeless shelter after allegations of fraud. At the same time, the shelter is calling a city rep intimidating. The councilwoman says she only tried to help the homeless women. ABC 7's Maria Garcia is live to give us both sides. Maria. Rick, the Dame La Mano run shelter in central El Paso is under investigation after allegations it misused funds. Because of the investigation, the city cannot release previously approved grant money to the shelter. Shelter says a city rep has it out for them. She's a lady that is out of control, acting unethical. There were no truth to any of the allegations that were made here today. Um, the, 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 the truth is, is the uh, Domino Mana shelters are under investigation. Before the investigation into possible fraud began, the shelter was court ordered to close because of hazardous living conditions. And we had secured a place for them at Salvation Army, and we just wanted to make sure that they knew where they could go because I didn't want anyone to end up on the street. That's when Nyland got involved. She says she was invited by the shelter to let homeless women know of a new place for them to stay. What happened next depends on who you believe. She went in there with the police, forcing, intimidating our residents. Even our kids got traumatized when she went in there. That um, meeting resulted in some conflicts with the owner who basically was trying to keep the site open to the last minute. Some other issues also service with regard to potential fraud, misuse of funds, other things that we had an obligation to turn over for review. Shelter officials deny.
doing. They didn't find nothing, nothing. And focus mostly on Nyland. She doesn't have no compassion, no mercy for the homeless, battered woman. My primary concern are the people. Uh, I'm going to do everything I possibly can uh, to make sure that they are properly protected.